This is the this is the same file that I finished with at the uh, last recording, and what I've added to it is I've gone into the firm sector and shown that paying taxes reduces the equity of the firm sector, while government spending increases it. And that's simply uh, following the accounting. If the government is spending money on firms and it's increasing the amount in the firm's deposit account, there's an increase in the amount of money with no increased liability, therefore it must change their equity. Same thing for tax. I'm taking money out of the asset side rather than the liability of the banking sector fall, of the uh, firm sector falling, its equity falls. So taxes reduce the equity of the firm sector, spending on them increases their equity. Quite just simply straightforward accounting. Um, I did that, I originally brought that in by showing the uh, tax and, and spending being something that, as I said, takes money out of the firm's, just looking at tax alone, tax takes money out of the firm sector's account and, the, and therefore it reduces the liabilities of the banking sector. It must also reduce their assets, so the reserves that banks have fall because of the taxation and then that turns up over in the central bank uh, account here as well. So the central bank shows bank um, assets, uh, the bank reserves falling, and equally it's, oh hang on, that's the banking segment, the central bank here, pardon me. Okay, with the central bank, um, um, the bank reserves fall when, ta when, when, governments, uh, when, when um, taxation occurs, that increases the deposit account of the uh, treasury at the central bank. So that's simply a swap from liabilities. Uh, from the point of view of the central bank, uh, one of its liabilities falls, which is bank reserves. The other one rises, which is the amount of money in the treasury's deposit account. And equally, government spending goes the opposite way. That increases the uh, size of the central bank's liability in terms of bank reserves. It reduces its liability to the treasury. Now, the only thing I haven't completed here is the impact of taxation and government spending on the Treasury. And again, um, government spending reduces the, equity, re reduces the assets of the uh, government sector. It, I, see it, I haven't got the government having any liabilities. I, um, I could have that showing up as a, as a loan it takes out from the central bank. But it's more valid at this stage to say, well, that ta uh, spending, if the government spends, it's going to reduce the government's equity. And equally, if the government taxes, it's going to increase the government's equity. So I've now got the... Uh, before I consider how government spending is actually financed, that's what I'll do in the, in the next uh, model that I build this way, this is simply saying if the government taxes and spends independent of the financing behind it, that changes the asset position and the equity position of the private sector. So we're not complete yet, but we're getting there. So I've now got, over here I'm comparing government to non-government equity. Here I've got bank equity to non-bank, so I'll just take a copy of that variable and paste that over here. And then the important issue for all of this is what happens to the non-bank, non-government sector's equity when you take a look at government spending and taxation. Um, because in the previous pure credit economy model, as I showed, and that still applies here, of course, because I haven't yet simulated the um, uh, government actually doing any net spending. Because the banks must be in positive equity, the non-bank sector of the economy must be in identical negative equity. And that applies when I bring in the, the banking sector, the, uh, the government sector, which I've just done. Now, if I simulate this, so I still have the government doing no net spending here because I've set the, let's just go back out to the other scale. I've set the um, level of government spending to 30% of GDP and level of taxation to exactly the same. And I've also changed the step size, by the way. Uh, in the previous version, I had a step size of 0 0.1, which is 10% of GDP. That's too big, so I've reduced it to a step size of 1% of GDP. And one of the not quite unique, but close to unique features of Minsky is you can change parameter values during a simulation. And the way you do it is just by pressing the up or down arrow, sorry, the up or down or the left or right arrow key. So pressing the left key reduces the number, pressing the right key increases the number. And I can do that both before a simulation and during a simulation. So what I want to do now is first of all run the model where there's, there's no net government 
uh, contribution to the economy. Its taxing precisely equals its, um, its spending. And what you get is exactly the same situation as for the um, a pure credit economy. By the way, this crazy line here is actually because um, the, the value is being, all this is being simulated by a computer, of course. A computer is not, does not have infinite accuracy, so what you're seeing is fluctuations around a value of zero for the amount of the uh, non-government equity there. That is, the, the scale of this graph, uh, zero, two, and four here, is zero uh, decimal point 14 decimal places and then the numbers you're seeing here. As soon as I make any change to the um, level of government spending, that, uh, that will become effectively a horizontal line. You won't even see it. Okay, so I'm going to now at this point continue the simulation. Okay. You can see the private debts, uh, debt of the private sector stabilizes to about 110% of GDP. Not, not an unrealistic level. Uh, the non-bank, non-government equity uh, falls to minus 12, having started at minus 10. Bank equity rises to 12, having started at 10 with the initial conditions. And now I'm going to see what happens if the government runs a 1% of GDP deficit. The important question in terms of um, the effect of a government sector on a, on a non-government, on, on, the, um, on the private sector, is what happens to private, bank, private sector non-bank equity when the government starts to spend? And the answer is, it goes positive. Private sector's equity is rising, and the debt ratio of the, non, of the, of the uh, private sector is falling because the increasing amount of money being created by government spending exceeding government taxation is increasing the amount of economic activity in the economy. I'll just uh, stop that for a second and, and zoom in and show some details here. So as you can see, non-government equity is the same magnitude and the opposite sign of government equity. The government is going into negative equity, that is enabling the private sector to go into positive equity. Throughout, because I'm not changing what the banks are doing, the bank sector still has a positive equity of 12, and the non-bank economy, which now includes the government, has a negative equity of minus 12. But that consists of the government, in, as it's showing here, in minus 15 of negative equity, and therefore minus 15.2. And therefore, if we take a look at the private sector, that's going to be 3.2. So the government running a deficit enables the non-bank, non-government sector to be in positive equity. And that's, that's the, the thing is the punchline of MMT, that's the punchline. Because a private, sector, a private economy, a private monetary economy, in that economy the private sector must be a negative equity relative to the banks. If the private non-bank sector is going to achieve positive equity, some other entity in the, organ, in the economy has to take on negative equity. And what I've got is the government is the one that's taking on that negative equity, enabling the private sector, sector to be in positive equity. Now, I've just shown that it happens here. I've got this happening, uh, but I haven't actually said, well, how does the government actually finance that? I'll do that when I start building the next model. But I'll just go back here and I'll now see what happens if the government decides to run, a, um, a, to run taxes. What happens if it starts taxing uh, to try to reduce the scale of its negative equity? So I'll now get the government... Uh, first of all, running a 1% of GDP um, deficit. And then at some point, some uh, senator who says, well, we can't run a deficit, that's terrible. Let's try to uh, run a balanced budget. Well, the economy stops growing. And at the same time, the private sector equity stabilises, in that case at minus 5. And if we then have the government increasing its taxation rate, the private sector is pushed back into negative equity again, and the debt ratio of the private sector rises. So this, I think, is the beginning to make the case as to why uh, the government should be in negative equity. And I'll now say, well, is that sustainable? Can the government finance permanent negative equity? Well, let's put it back to the stage where the government is running a deficit again, and therefore pushing the private sector back into positive equity.